Hey, listen up. We got another episode of Wise Cracks. Featuring the crack man himself, Bill Krakenberger. And our co-host, John Orlando. Straight from Las Vegas. Wise Cracks is your ticket inside the world of sports betting. With tips, picks, special guests, and more. Only on WSN.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to Wise Cracks. This is the Super Bowl recap edition with yours truly, John Orlando and Mr. Bill Krakenberger. Crack, I rode Tom Brady all the way to the Super Bowl and then I jumped off the Brady train and, uh, and that didn't work out too well for me. Hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with consistency. As long as I know, whatever you do to do opposite, just as good as finding yeah. a winning handicapper. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. Did no, you watch? Just, I'm sure you watched that game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. what did you think? What are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, it was kind of a boring game to be Agreed. honest. It wasn't, even though there was 40 points scored, not like the 13 to three new England Rams game years ago. It, it was kind of a boring game, believe it or not. There was not really that competitiveness back and forth did not happen on the field. So, uh, a kind of a boring game for the viewers. It was just a one-way game. It was just Tampa Bay. Even though Kansas City scored that first opening three points, it, uh, Tampa Bay started scoring touchdowns, never looked back. So, Was there um, a prop bet that Kansas City would not score a touchdown? Do you know what that would have paid out if you would have bet yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, um, I did see that somewhere. Will uh, Actually, it was worded as, will, will Mahomes not get a touchdown pass? But – um, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it should have been a hundred to one and they probably paid 30 to one or something like that. So, right. Um, yeah, it, 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 I'm sure it was a prop bet somewhere. He looked really frazzled to me. I, I really think, um, the pressure actually got to him and he's a guy that to me all season and, and, you know, going back to last year was always calm, cool and collective. You know, there were some playoff games last year. I don't know if you remember, they were behind like in maybe the, the, the championship game before the Super Bowl, um, they were behind and early. I don't know if you remember, and 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 he it didn't phase him, and he really looked rattled to me on on Sunday. Yeah, this you know this team lost to the Raiders this year, then and, and they almost lost the second game to the Raiders. They uh, didn't. I think they didn't cover maybe seven out of eight of the last games. So uh, before the playoffs. So, I mean, and you look at last year's Super Bowl, it's always easy to look on Monday morning and be a Monday morning quarterback. But you look at last, you look at last year's Super Bowl, he did not perform well till late in the game. And even though he was yeah. the MVP, he only got the MVP because of the fourth quarter he, he had. So, uh, you know, he's a kid still, too. He's, he's going to be a great quarterback. He is a great quarterback. Yeah. But uh, he ain't Tom Brady, at least not <laughs> yet. Yeah. And speaking of Tom Brady, so he wins the MVP, but um, I would have argued that maybe it could have gone to Gronk too, you know, it could have went, um, went to Gronk. Absolutely. Two touchdowns and uh, a good game. And uh, I also heard it could have went to a couple other guys too, but I think Gronk would have been my second choice for sure. There was a prop bet, I believe on Gronk winning the MVP was 75 to one. I think he was like 16th on the list or something. So yeah. If yeah, anybody bet that, you'd probably be a little upset. Did you bet? Did you bet any of the Super Bowl MVP props? No, no MVP props. Um, <clears throat> earlier in the season, I thought it was a good bet to bet a money line uh, prop, which was on uh, Mahomes getting. Uh, I seen anywhere from four to five to one, but I actually took it about four to one, being an MVP in the Super Bowl. But he had to get to the Super Bowl. It was like an action bet, no matter what. So I thought, you know, what are you going to bet? Kansas City money line, or you're going to bet? Um, are you going to bet the homes at oh, four to right. one, basically getting four to one on the Super Bowl? Because 10 of the last 14 Super Bowls, the quarterback has won the MVP. I had a little peanut on that. Nothing big. I more did the props on this particular game uh, than, than, than anything. Um, even I had a little bit on the total. I bet on their 57 at, 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 at the South Point at, at Superbook. I bet on their 57, but I really didn't have uh, that much outlay on the game itself more of just the proposition bets yeah and i want to get into all your props a little bit later um but, okay. but you did but you i do want to talk about the one that you just mentioned it's a class you pop into my head during these games now because it's like i i only hear your voice when in my head when it turns out to be what you said was true now if i could just 
get to hear your voice before I make the bets. The example I'm going to give is the under, right? The, the, you, you always say, go the other way that everyone's going. Like the obvious, all roads led to the over. Brady versus the Chiefs, uh, Mahomes, uh, you know, it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a high scoring game. The ball's going to be flying in the end zone, you know, every other, every other passing play. And of course, not the case. How do you do it? <laughs> well, I mean, listen, that's, it's almost like the contrarian side. Again, I want to be on the opposite side of the public and you have to look at the numbers. This game opened up 57 across a lot of Las Vegas and even the offshore world had some 57s and Right away, the sharp guys came in and scooped up the under, and it never got back to 57. Stayed at about 56 the entire two-week period, and uh, it went up to 50, 56 and a half at a couple of Las Vegas square books, uh, but never went to 57 again. And at game time, literally an hour before the game, I always say that, my, my – uh, you can almost, it's called market capping or screen capping. You can look at your, your screen, whether it be your Don Best or your Odds Trader screen. You could see the sports books. The sharper sports books were begging for over money. There was, they, I know one of the books was 55 under minus $1.20, which means you're going under 55. You have to lay 120 to win 100 if you're, if you're betting on the under. Even money, no juice on the over. And that means they really only wanted one, one way betting. They wanted to bet. Oh, they wanted to take over bets because they had they had the feeling not no that's wrong not a feeling they had the sharp guys that bet the under they respected they really wanted to be on that side of the game so um, the under was definitely the way to go I didn't bet anything more I could have been on their fifty six and a half at a couple spots I didn't because fifty seven is one of those numbers that not that it's a key number but it can be a key number you know there there are certain scores that add up to the you know forty seven fifty seven um, that, that, that could be, I just didn't want a, a situation where the game lands 57 and I, I wound up going under 56 and a half after I kind of got all of 57. I wanted a few days earlier. Yeah. Um, I was looking before, uh, we started the show at, uh, you've got some, some gambling stats in the notes, uh, that I was reading before the show. I mean, uh, one of them that stick, I mean, a lot of them stick out. I don't know which one, if you want to go through some of these, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but uh, one was there was $136 million uh, bet on the Super Bowl uh, with just the Nevada books. Is that just yep. Nevada? That's just Nevada. Yeah. The, and they, they won $12.6 million on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers upsetting the Kansas City Chiefs this year, according to the figures released by Tuesday by the Nevada Gaming Control Board. Uh, that's actually a lower number, like I said, than, than, than previous seasons. It's 12% down from last year's Super Bowl. That's in part due to the, you know, the occupancy restrictions in Las Vegas casinos uh, amid this coronavirus pandemic. So it's, it's still the fifth most since the state began tracking the betting on the action since 91. Uh, five of the six reported one million plus bets on the Super Bowl were placed in Nevada. So, um, you know, Illinois, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, also among the states that have reported wins on the Super Bowl. And uh, betting handle had definitely spiked in many of the new jurisdictions that have launched illegal sports betting uh, in, in recent years. Uh, the, the data leading from the geolocation, from the GeoComply show firm, that, that's the firm, it's called GeoComply. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, showed a 267% year-to-year increase in online betting over Super Bowl weekend, despite several sports books experiencing service disruptions in the hours leading up and during the game. Even the, the big books that I know, their apps were very slow moving. That's the kind of handle. And we're not there yet. Um, even these multi-billion dollar sports books back in New Jersey, I'm heard, I, I've told, I've been told we're very slow getting their bets in. So a couple of them, a couple of them were good. Uh, speaking of New Jersey, 117.4 million was bet on the Super Bowl with New Jersey sports books. It's a 116 percent increase from last year's game, and after suffering net losses, uh, literally, it's so hard to believe net losses on their first two Super Bowls, but they did. New, Jer <laughs> New Jersey books actually won 11.3 million from from gamblers. Then you can go on to other jurisdictions like Illinois, 45.6 million, Pennsylvania, 53.6 million, um, and they also had nice little wins. In, in their markets. So um, anyway, you can go into the, uh, the one long shot that did come through that I heard about was the Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, throwing zero touchdown passes, like I said earlier. So that bet was a New Jersey better place to $3,000 bet on Mahomes not throwing for 15 to one odds and won $45,000. Now, here's Let's a perfect example. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I was that is that is still the casino coming out on top, right? Because 15 to 1 is so not fair. That's ridiculous. That should feel like that should be a yeah. 500 to 1. But considering there was supposed to be over under was like seven touchdowns in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, that that was uh that's that's just really almost not fair. But it's fair. The guy with the guy won 45,000, but sure. the true odds are probably more towards 30 to 1. So it's just uh it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and so, do you obviously Nevada is taking a hit um, because of all the new jurisdictions that that have gambling, right? But all for the, I think it's for the greater good uh, as a whole, and even even for Vegas, I think it, big picture because there's still it's not like people aren't gonna not come to Vegas anymore it just gives them that option i think it, it, the more people that, that that have the opportunity to bet on sports means the more gamblers means the more new gamblers means when people come there's even though we may see a dip here in vegas um i think when you know the casual sports better that you know downloads an app because he lives in michigan and he bets on the game we all know that's what hooks you right and then and yep. then you have a new person now right you bring up a great point, John. Exactly. A hundred percent correct. This is going to bring a new, I don't want to say genre, but this is going to bring all these new up and coming guys to gambling and sports betting that never bet sports before. Now they have a reason, a legitimately reason oh, let's go to Vegas. We got, you know, nightclubs, we got partying, we got Super Bowl time. So this, this will be uh, uh, Vegas will be back for sure. Even though this is a little bit lower of a year, it still ranks in the top five that since they've been keeping track, when this pandemic thing is over and, and uh, we're back to net normal and hopefully next season, this, this Vegas, you know, don't forget these parties in Vegas were limited to 50 people. They usually have thousands. So Vegas will be back and they'll be stronger than ever and they'll have bigger numbers than ever eventually. So you bring up a real good point. Yeah, and I guess uh, so last year for 2020, the Nevada Books won a net $122.4 million on football bets between college and pro, and it's the most uh, lucrative football year that for the state bookmakers ever. So uh, the money's still coming in here too. Absolutely. And we had Jay on last week, Jay Cornegay, who, who was the head of Westgate, Las Vegas, the Superbook. And he said, he said the betting on the handle in the Super Bowl at his shop was similar to how much was wagered on last year's game between the Chiefs and 49ers. So in normal times, Cornegay also said that Super Bowl Sunday in the sports book feels like a heavyweight fight is going to take place. This year he said it was more like a welterweight fight. I love that. It was just pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, I'm seeing more and more girls that are betting on sports. Um, I was surprised. I had a little Super Bowl party uh, over at Green Valley Ranch Casino in a, in a suite. Um, since it's so hard to go with a group of people to, to a live, you know, to, to see a game now, like in a sports because you can't sit together. I had uh, 15, 20 people come over in a, in a huge suite. Uh, that I got over at Green Valley Ranch. And I was surprised how many of Vanessa's friends, you know, my girlfriend, the pint Size warrior, uh, how many of her friends loved betting on props. So, uh, you know, to your point that, uh, you know, there's, there's always going to be new betters coming in. You imagine that. So here you have girls in their probably mid, late 20s, early yep. 30s. Here you have these girls that are betting on proposition bets bets, and they're, they're new to the industry, new to the game, but it's all talked about, especially in Las Vegas. Just think about what the guys do in that age group. God, this is uh, <laughs> this little thing may catch on of ours. Yeah, yeah, right. So while we're talking, let's talk about props. Uh, how did you end up doing? I know you bet a bunch of them. Well, let me just tell you. As we speak, it's Wednesday, right? I have done so many promotional appearances and and and, and shows and. Uh, podcasts and stuff. I, I'm almost done. I still have this much left. I still have this pile of tickets left to grade. I did not grade these yet. These will be graded. And uh, <laughs> that's how many prop bets I, I have had. So I, I brought no. that out. Um, most people, when they bet, they can't wait to look. The, the, the most important okay. news is, did I win? You, you've been too busy to check your handful of tickets. <laughs> well, I, I know, I know, I, I know I won, but nothing like I thought I should have won on a 40 point game. I'll tell you right now, a 40 point game being a low game. I bet a lot of unders, uh, especially that I had a correlation here. So I had the um, first ball to receive the first ball 
Tampa Bay, if they receive the coin, if they win the coin toss, they're going to take the ball. Kansas City has a, a high percentage of their coin tosses won. They deferred. So I figured that, you know, we, 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 my, my team that's behind me, we, we figured uh, that, 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 was going to, that that was going to happen, that Kansas City was going to defer. I wanted Tampa Bay to win the coin toss, by the way. So when, when Kansas City won and they chose to defer, I was like, oh, thank God. So they had the ball first. And the reason why I say that, so Tampa Bay having the ball first – led to a lot of prop bettings, a lot, a lot of prop bets. Like if Tampa Bay has the ball first, well, that means Mahomes isn't going to have the ball five minutes or six minutes, depending on the first drive of Tampa Bay. Well, that's a good bet to bet against Mahomes in the first quarter, against his throwing, against his passing, against touchdown passes. It also meant the opposite thing in the third quarter, Brady uh, also not having the ball first and the Chiefs having the ball first, Brady not throwing a touchdown, not getting a lot of yards, not getting. So that worked out perfectly. And right away, you think you're going to have a giant game. And even my crack wins guys I gave seven and six to, they were probably teetering on the edge of their seat because one of the props I give out was um, number of Kansas City players to have a catch and under seven and a half. And sure enough, it was on seven. And there was two <laughs> minutes left in the game. They they threw one pass to win one other, an eighth person right at the end of the game and, and just lost that bet from a big difference from eight to five, eight and five to seven and six. So seven and six, you're actually going to break even or even lose a little bit of juice. So, but, but, you know, I, I bet 150 props and, uh, and, you know, the sports books, depending on what sports book market they're at and the, the industry and jurisdiction they're at, they're at, you don't know if all the props are available and stuff. So yeah. I, it, it depends on what, where, where you were and what you could, what you could have got in. So uh, I love, I get them in everywhere. So. I love how you just broke that down, though, talking about how if Brady gets the ball first, it's going to cut into the clock time for Mahomes. Um, and and it, it goes to show uh, back to the science of what you do, you know, that oh, yeah. it's not just for most people props. It's just emotional, right? They look at a bunch of props and they go, yeah, Mahomes can throw a blank amount of touchdown passes. It's, it's a, it is an emotionally based decision for, for probably 99% of the people that are betting props, but you are breaking that down in a way that it makes so much sense on how and what happens in the beginning of the game with who gets the ball first also is going to affect uh, your second half betting and, and, and totals and things of that nature. It's really fascinating to, to hear you break it down like that. Yeah, you know, it, uh, it, there was so much money I had pending on this game that at the, the end of the game, the end of the, uh, the up until the kickoff that last day, Sunday, I probably didn't bet enough unders on the players that I normally bet. Normally I'm betting under quarterback uh, touchdown passes. If I one or the other, not, not all the time, but a lot of things like that probably didn't bet enough of those unders to make it a real successful, a real profitable game. But uh, like I said, listen, it was a totally disjointed game too. There was no rhythm. It just didn't feel right when you're, you know, normally yeah. when you bet unders on the props, this game ends up with, with total 40 points. Like I said, I'm going to cash in, but just not here. It just wasn't the situation for all the, the ones that I want. Listen, I think I bet under Kelsey and he went over. I bet under tackles. Uh, I bet under tackles on somebody. I can't think of who I bet under tackles, but they had 12 tackles. Like there's certain things I didn't, that, that just right. didn't gel right. right. But again, when it's all said and done, I'm going to hold a percentage. I'm going to win a little peanut to the game, but um, not, not like previous Super Bowls. So that's, go, that's going to happen. I mean, Tampa, you know, going up big, then the Chiefs throwing every play uh, to come back. It was, you're going to lose some of the, 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 the Chiefs unders because of that. Um, listen, the national anthem prop was taken off the board. A reporter taped it and they were from a rehearsal across the street. It posted it on Twitter. That was taken off the board. What are these people thinking? The weekend's first song was leaked. Uh, the Gatorade color kind of it wasn't really a popular bet. And, you know, it's funny. Someone actually told me that there was going to be orange in the Kansas City bucket and purple in the Tampa Bay uh, bucket. Now, they didn't show the, the gate. They didn't show the Gatorade leak, but you did see it from afar. Someone videotaped it behind them. It, uh, it looked blue. Yeah, but it could have been purple. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it could have been arguments about that, but you know, it, I, I get some good information on that kind of stuff, especially the weekend, like his first song. Um, I've had some good songs over the years, like we talked on last. Yeah. Week, yeah. I guess. And that stuff, uh, unfortunately we may never see a bet on like, what will the first song be? What yeah. will the color of the singer's hair be? You may never see that stuff again. 
there's too, I think too many people are hip to it. Right. And, and with social media being what it is and the ease of being able to just pick up your phone and, and take a video wherever you are. Uh, I think people just can't resist, but putting out, you know, breaking that kind of news. Right. And yep. obviously uh, there's no secrets on the internet. So. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you said something a, a few minutes ago about, you said you probably should have bet more of the unders on props. And I, I'm glad you said that because I wanted to ask you <clears throat> the, uh, the novices over on this side of the, uh, of the table. Um, I feel like whenever we make a bet, once we see the outcome, we Monday morning quarterback that bet. Oh, I should have bet more. I should have bet less. Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? Do you have the, do you go through that? Yourself? Very rare. Very rare. But this Super Bowl, I may have, but uh, very rare. You know, it's funny. I was saying I'm waiting until Sunday to bet some unders. I didn't see a big difference in the bookmakers' lines from a week earlier where maybe like, like yards on a certain person will be 300 yards. So on game day, I expect it to go to 310, 320. You really didn't see those moves. So um, I, I really didn't jump on them like I thought I was going to be able to. And uh, I just know one thing, the bookmakers cleaned up. You can guarantee that. Yeah, as, as they always do, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, if you want to clean up sports fans, uh, I got to tell you, as I do every week, it's time to go over to WSN.com. Seriously, this is the site for guys like Crack uh, and even guys like me. We love action, promos, bonuses, all the great strategy guys. Head over to WSN.com uh, and uh, they will make you a better player 100%. Um, they've always got great uh, pick em contests going on. Obviously, NFL has now ended, but I'm sure they'll have something up there for NBA or baseball is right around the corner as well. So make sure you head over to WSN.com to today folks yeah you know I'm, I'm i'm on there right now i'm on wsn u.s sports betting news yeah i'm so happy that i've always like this assist there's some legendary players in the nfl i of course think of the great walter payton and sweetness i think of him i think of barry sanders when they got a touchdown they just handed the ball to the ref let's go next thing they were professionals some of the greatest two running backs ever and sure enough, I'm reading this article. I found this on WSN, U.S. Sports Betting News. NFL Hall of Famer Barry Sanders, Sanders signs a deal to represent BetMGM. I didn't know that. WSN wow. showed me that. Yeah. Uh, there's an article on Mattress <laughs> Mac and the $3.5 million Super Bowl bet that everyone knows about. But, you know, I'm almost getting a little bit tired of this stuff because, all right, he bet $3.5 million on, on the underdog Tampa Bay, and he won, and he's smiling with his $3.5 million dollars. Okay, Mattress Mac, I understand, and I'm happy for you. You're a great marketing guy, but I don't think he won that. He had a promotion where he was forced to bet that money because <laughs> he gave a promotion out in his stores that he would lose a lot of money. So he was basically hedging his bets uh, of, of you know, giving his customers a great deal. So I'm happy for it, but I don't want it to be misrepresented. And, you know, these big bet things they talk about all the time, these big bet money that these sports books take, well, you know, uh, they're taking it for a reason. They're taking it because it's on yeah. the side. They're taking it because it's on basically the hardest sport to beat. They're not taking it on a college basketball game where I'm limited to $500. So enough's enough. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't get to bet 100000 on red and 100000 on black at the roulette wheel and, uh, and say you won. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, right? a good That's a good point. When you, yeah. you're talking about a game with a 5.5% edge, you, you, you're, you're exactly right, John. 5.26 to be exact roulette. So, uh, not on, so that article's there. Also, the, the next four articles – Texas, Georgia, Iowa, Missouri, all talking about their legalized sports betting moving forward. And then you have articles on so many different things that's going on now. Uh, soccer, of course, NBA, Pebble Beach. I mean, there's just a great mix of articles on WSN. And, and also, like I always say, it's just a gold mine for Advantage Gamblers, too. It's got the articles, links, promos, best online sports book, the bonuses they have running there. Ridiculous, ridiculous. So check them out. If you haven't been there already, WSN.com. Uh, make sure you go there and check out the stuff.
And now it's time for me to make you uncomfortable crack and brag on you a little bit. The final tally is in for this uh, NFL season and uh, crack wins players experience 59.2. Let's just round that up to 60% because we can. Uh, I mean, that's pretty strong crack and that's uh, up plus 41 and a half units. Uh, so uh, definitely head on over to crack wins, download the app. You can get it on Apple. You can get it on Google. You can just go to crackwins.com. And also just because NFL season, is over people don't think that means crack just sits on the sidelines okay because the train keeps moving forward we've got nba we've got college hoops baseball's right around the corner and uh you're not so bad at golf either are you crack yeah no we, we listen the 59.2 percent win rate in the nfl oh my god it's unheard of i never had a winning rate like that so uh plus 41 and a half units really i give that credit to my team we we have really uh done great this year and i, I the nfl really has helped us Keep this uh, this train steaming forward. Like you said, college basketball has been unbelievable. I couldn't ask for a better season. Uh, and, and you know, now we have golf happening. We still have we're still in the full swing of of college basketball. March Madness coming up. I love betting that first couple of rounds of March Madness. Um, it, it's just busy. But I tell you, I honestly, I am just so uh, literally worn out. I am so happy and the college basketball is coming to an end i get to do some uh, in about seven eight weeks from now look forward to and i love baseball but i look forward to just getting away and maybe going down to florida for a month i, I go to florida for about a month every year and uh, i look forward to doing that yeah so i was going to ask you so do you take is there a patch of time where you just are completely off or are you no. always <laughs> no, the, the, <laughs> no there's Even always when I go some... down to florida we're still working and you know um you know, when I say go to Florida, people may think of party time in South Beach. That's not me. Listen, I'm too old for that kind of stuff. Not that I ever did. I never did it anyway. I just never drank and partied on the beach. Um, I like going down there with a bunch of friends. We rent a big giant house for the month. And uh, I just, I treat them to the whole month. So it's just a, it's a real fun. And, and I get to, get to share my success with uh, my, my assistant, my family and, and my great. friends. Just, it's a great time. And, I, and you know, they, they may go out and drink and party a little bit. I'm kind of the guy that stays home, uh, you know, playing Monopoly. <laughs> what, what part of Florida? Well, I do both coasts. I actually go to the East Coast and I'll go to like a Pompano or a Delray Beach up there by Boca. Nice. Um, I, we're probably going to get a, a place, a, a house over there uh, for about a month. But then I'll pop over to the West Coast and go see my brother in, in, in Fort Myers for uh, maybe three or four days. Go down to Tampa for a couple of days. I have a I have a friend that lives in a sick, sick, sick house right there on the beach where the where the Phillies have spring training. I just can't think of the town. Clearwater, right? right? Clearwater, Clearwater Beach. Yeah, I mean, there's 15 houses where he lives. He's got Hulk Hogan on one side and the first baseman on the Philly, Ryan Howard on the other side. Oh wow! Uh, oh, he lives in a insane house on the beach he's got a pool at the beach you know lives in a 10 million dollar mansion there i go to his, stay at his place for a couple days hang out down there it's so it's so fun uh i look forward to it i look forward to the warm weather and weather and uh you know just uh, something that's kind of i can unwind a little bit but yet my team is still working though we'll still do basketball we'll still yeah. we'll still do uh, uh you know nba totals and stuff we'll still do uh, baseball but it's not as much craziness as it is right. right now with cross sports with everything. So I'm glad the NFL season's over. But I tell you what, it's been a fun ride. If I can have NFL all year round, imagine me saying this, I would probably have <laughs> NFL all year round. Yeah. <laughs> how, how much uh, work goes into baseball season? Like, do you have to keep up with all the trades and that kind of thing? Or is it, is it, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you need to see how, how the teams are going to perform and yeah. then you start it's, to it's more yeah. from an analytics side. It's more from also watching the lines, the opening line to the closing line, the moves. Uh, it, it's more for that. And let me just talk. I'll, I'll talk briefly about this now. You know, baseball's not here yet, but it's, it's a dog eat dog world. It's a dog eat favorite world because underdogs are the way to go in baseball. So you're not going to get rich. You're not going to make money laying a dollar, sixty dollars, seventy dollar, eighty in baseball. So it's, it's an underdog world. That's what I look at. Yeah. You love those dogs. I love the dogs. True yeah, action no, junkies do. love the dogs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not as much as previous years though. Listen, 10 years ago, you may have had a certain percentage of underdogs that, that are really uh, making you money. That has dropped a little bit. It's evened off a little bit, but it's not where it should be. So uh, underdogs are still the way to go, John. 
I want to bring up that there is a UFC fight this weekend that uh, you might want to just check out because our our good friend, Mr. Julian Marquez, is making his return. We had oh, Julian cool. on earlier in the season on on uh, Wisecracks. And I just wanted to tell you that Julian is the he's the first card on the main event. I mean, he's the first fight on the on the main card. Uh, and he is at minus 160 right now. Uh, wow, okay. So, I need so the inside information. Is he ready to go? Or? He's ready to go. You know, he's been off for almost three years. He had a really bad injury in his last fight. Um, you know, Julian tore the lat off of his bone in his last fight. Uh, oh. In the first round, like third punch that he threw in the fight wow. and still went the distance and ended up losing a split decision. So the judges, some judges actually saw it Julian's way, uh, even with that injury. And he's wow. had, he's, he's worked his tail off, uh, you know, rehabbing and, and getting back and he's super excited. He's super pumped up and I can't wait to watch him step into the cage, uh, and do what he loves to do I look, on Saturday I look night. To seeing it. Yeah. Good. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the main event on that card is Kamaro Usman and Gilbert Burns. Yep. Um, and, uh, Burns is a pretty good dog. He's like plus two forty, I think. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a page out of your book. Book, and I'm gonna, cool. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on the dog on that one. But right. uh, okay, uh, we've got one Twitter question. I, well, I got a Twitter question. I don't know if you have any in your phone, but I, I have one uh, that pertains to the Super Bowl. This comes from at Chaz Madison, and he asks, "What was Brady's beef with the one Chiefs player? Did you happen to see uh, what I saw? It. Uh, I yeah, actually I know." It. But I, didn't I, know. So if you okay. know, tell our listeners and Yeah. So I don't know the name of the Chiefs player. Um, he's a defensive back, I think. Um, and he kind of got in Brady's face after one uh, play. And he said something like, you're not throwing a touchdown pass today. Not today. And literally the very next play, the very next play, Brady connects with Gronk for the first uh, – <laughs> for the first touchdown for the bucks uh, and, and Tom being the competitor he is, he literally ran that guy down uh, right after he completed the pass. He, he made it a point to go find that guy and got in his face. And he said, you can read his lips. If you can find the clip, he said, what happened? What happened? Oh, wow. <laughs> so wow. yeah, Tom is, oh, uh, is a that's fierce funny. competitor, man. Yeah. I, I got to give it to him. And, and uh, you know, he is, he's, a, he's, a, he's not only a fierce competitor, he probably is going down as the greatest quarterback of all time. You know, it's easy to say that spontaneously because we live in the moment, but I don't think so. I really think he is the, the, the greatest, uh, he's the greatest competitor. Uh, and, and not only that, like I said, the, the probably the greatest player of all time quarterback wise and maybe even NFL wise. So, yeah, I mean, um, it's, it is hard to deny someone that just played in there. What is it? His 10th Super Bowl? Or his 11th, 10th Super Bowl, right? That's unbelievable. He's won unbelievable. seven out of 10 Super Bowls. Warren Moon, who we had on this show earlier in the season, played, I think, 20 or 21 years and never made it to a Super Bowl. And Warren Moon, obviously, is a Hall of Fame quarterback. So that's a quarterback that is one of the, you know, at the top of the food chain that made it into the Hall of Fame, plays 20 years, let's just call it, never even makes it to the Super Bowl. Tom has made it to the Super Bowl in half of the number of seasons that he's played, and he's won seven of them. If if you can, if you're out there arguing that Tom Brady is not the the goat you shouldn't be allowed to watch football anymore that's right that's right so let, let me close here let me tell you something i am probably pretty surprised john you, this is going to be spontaneous here what do you think i'm looking at the odds from the from the circa what do you think the odds to win the super bowl next year who do you think who do you think is the favorite and what do you think the odds should be it's a good question right i think I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a trick question. So I don't think the Bucks are going to be the favorite. I think they're going to go back and say the Chiefs are the favorite. You're right. And I am going to guess that they are five to one right now. They are. They're five and a half, five and a half to one. Very okay. good, John. You wow. You have come a long way. I've come a long way. Know. I'm learning, you, crack. Wow. You came a long way here. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't, t didn't talk about this earlier. The Chiefs are five and a half to one. The Bucks are eight to one to win the Super Bowl. So the surprising bets here – are real simply the Rams and the Bills 
both 10 to one. And they've gotten the wise guy money from what I'm told is the, the bills and the, and the Rams. So I did Rams know. is interesting because, you know, they got Matt Stafford from the Lions. They, they did yeah. a quarterback swap. Um, yep. So yep. that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So it's good to see some early, some early odds for next year at one of the sharp from one of the sharpest sports books out there. And, yeah. Uh, you hit it right on the head. Yeah. Casey, Casey, the big favorite. Uh, amazing that I didn't think the bucks were going to be eight to one, to be honest with you, but that's crazy. Eight, I'll take eight it. To one. I'll, and I'm in, I'm 10 in to one, 10 to one on, on surprise. I was a little surprised. That's the low odds on, on the bills again. So yeah, uh, very interesting. So you, it should be fun. It should be a fun, uh, a fun season NFL season off for us to kind of rest a little bit and relax yeah. and not have that every weekend craziness because people love to bet because these games are on TV. Yeah. And, uh, Trust me, the sports books love you guys to think that way. This year we can calm down. This is the time of the year you can kind of calm down. But I know it all starts up again in a few weeks. March Madness, baby. You, I love it. Uh, you mentioned Circa just now. I was at Circa over the weekend. I didn't watch the game there. Obviously, I just said I was at Green Valley. But um, I went to dinner of, over at Barry's Prime at Circa on Friday night with a bunch of people. Mr. Ellenberger was was in tow. And uh, I don't know if you've eaten at that steakhouse yet. Nope. It is, it is yet. incredible. I heard it was great. Barry's a great chef. I've known yeah. him for years. Look forward yeah. to going over there. Yeah, and then we went up. Uh, have you been to the Legacy Club in there yet? That like a, it's like a rooftop lounge was really nice. And I did. I ran into Mr. Moon over there. Warren Moon oh, was, wow. was there. Yeah, so uh, he sends his regards. Oh, and, cool. Uh, yeah, awesome. I had a I had awesome. a good time. But uh, yeah, I I uh, you've really turned me on to the Circa uh, property, and it's a it's a it's a good spot. I really enjoyed it over there. It felt like old Great. Vegas. It was it had wow, a good we vibe. We love that guy, Eric Stevens. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have him uh, on here. Eric's gonna come on the show with us but crack uh as always a, a fun show with you and i'm looking forward to uh what you've got on the basketball picks coming up and uh, obviously pitchers and catchers reporting to spring training in just uh, about a week and a half wow cool stuff can't wait yeah. all right crack so uh hey i have an idea let's do this again next week let's do it again next week let's not forget about wsn and uh crack wins that that parlay of those two places one of my favorite parlays to ever bet. Absolutely. You can check out the Crack Wins app. It's in the Apple Store. It's on Google Play or go to crackwins.com. We are out of time this week. Mr. Crackman, I will see you next week, and we Have will see all week. of you next week on Wise Cracks. Wise Cracks.